Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome to Port Royale 4, a new colonial trading game that released only a few days ago on PC, Xbox One, and PS4, developed by Gaming Minds and published by Calypso, and a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. If you like what you see and you want to learn more, then of course you can take a look at that link in the description down below. If you've never seen the Port Royale games before, the goal is to create your own colonial capitalistic empire. You will choose a leader from one of the four major colonial nations, that is to say England, France, Spain, and the Netherlands, and with that leader you will establish trade routes, build up production chains, maybe engage in a little bit of piracy, and ultimately make a load of money in the Caribbean. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, there are four different campaigns in the game for each different nation, but we're not going to mess with that right now. For this video, I'm just going to be playing a free game and enjoy the sandbox. Now, the first thing we have to do is decide on our nationality, and each nation has their own perks as well as some unique historical ships to change up your gameplay a little bit. For example, England has cheap military vessels, which is very good if you plan on privateering, going to war, pirating, or something along those lines. Uh, the Spanish have extra workers and more satisfied workers, which is very good if you want to build tall in your cities and have lots of production. In my case, though, I'm going to be playing as the Dutch, mainly because I am of Dutch descent myself, so I'm a little bit loyalist in that way. These guys are very good for setting up early merchant fleets because those vessels are a little bit cheaper, which I like. Now, on top of that, we have to decide on our leader's class, and there are four to choose from. We have the Adventurer, the Merchant, the Buccaneer, which is basically a privateer, and the Piratus. I'm going to be playing with the Merchant because, again, if we're going to be having cheaper Merchant fleets, I want to make as much money in the early game as possible. We don't need trade licenses to trade with different ports, which saves a lot of early game money, and we can trade with all nations even though we are at war, which means my supply routes will not get messed up. But we can't have as many combat vessels. That's fine, though, because in my personal opinion, there is nothing that money can't solve in this game. The next thing we need to do is decide on our map over here, and you can see all the Dutch, the Spanish, the French, and the English ports down over here. We could change up that distribution, have a larger Netherlands start, etc. if we want, or just change how the map looks. I'm going to leave it pretty much on its defaults. And we do need to decide on a uh, starting location for our hometown. I think I'm going to choose, let's say... Um, Puerto Padre, I think that should be pretty good. It's not too far away from Port Royal itself, which is the capital city for our Vice Royal from the Netherlands, and that's very important for us. So I think this is a good starting location. We'll have 200,000 gold and two vessels to start. We could increase it or decrease it, which I guess should impact the difficulty, but really what it does is just change the speed of the game, because making money is generally not too bad. Everything else here, we're going to leave as is. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and here we are in the world of Port Royal. To start off, we can only see all of the Dutch ports, because we are Dutch. But if we travel around a little bit more, we could find all the other cities. And I think there are 60 in total on this map, so it's actually pretty darn large if you really want to go in-depth. Now, as I said, this game is primarily about setting up a Caribbean trading empire, which means we need to find goods that we can buy cheaply and then sell at a higher price to make a profit. That is what 90% of this game is going to be about. If you take a look at the different cities over here, we can see what they are producing and get some sense of what they are going to need. So in Puerto Padre, for example, my hometown, let's take a look. Now, we do have a certain number of inhabitants and this will go up or down over time. Uh, the more inhabitants there are, the more potential workers there are who can work different buildings and increase the production. We also can see what each city is able to cultivate or extract. In this case, we have corn, tobacco, coffee, and metals. But if you look at production here, this is what we are actually producing, and that's metals, corn, and tobacco, but none of the coffee. So that is a potential business opportunity for me to start producing coffee and selling it elsewhere. But this only tells us what we're producing, not what we need. The best way to do that is to look at the trade menu here. Now we can see that this town is consuming some grain and some fruit, for example. However, there is not a lot in the stockpile and they're not producing it on their own. And whenever there is a high demand but not enough supply, that means the prices are going to go up. So we have an incentive to go and find things like grain and fruit from other ports and sell them here in Puerto Padre so we can make a profit. We also see that they are producing far more corn than they are consuming. So we would want to, for example, select our convoy right here, go to Puerto Padre, and perhaps buy several barrels of corn. And you can see that as we start getting rid of the stockpile, the price starts to go up. But not much in this case. We can make an absolute ton of money by buying corn cheap in this case. Not going to do that right now, though. We'll come back to some of that. 
If you want to change up your city's production, then you will need to build more buildings. And we can actually go here to the construction menu and see there are quite a few options that we could use to improve the town in some way. There are uh, residential areas for more citizens, as well as some different buildings that give some amenities to increase satisfaction or efficiency, or perhaps reduce the odds of plague, etc. So all of these can be quite good just to improve your town. But then there are different business ventures. For example, we have coffee plantations. Right now, there aren't any here. So if I were to play on down a couple of coffee plantations, let's say down over here, go ahead and place one right there for an example. This is now our own personal owned business. And once constructed and worked, we will be producing some coffee in this town, which I can then pick up and ship elsewhere. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and build two of them because I think that could be worthwhile. And then as far as transferring your goods from one place to another, well, obviously you have the convoys. Now, right now I have two different ships in a single convoy with a total cargo capacity of 400, which is not a lot, but that's fine for what we need right now. What we could do is go to Puerto Padre and actually just buy some barrels from this menu. Or we can go ahead and establish a trade route between different ports and automatically pick up goods and sell them where they are needed. And I think that's the most efficient way for us to play the game. So let's go ahead and go to this trade route here and create a new one. From here, you can see all of the different currents, which will judge how fast your ship can move. Obviously, going against the wind and the current is going to slow you down quite a bit. So it's to your advantage to move uh, with the wind as much as you can. But we're going to start in Puerto Padre right here. And then we are going to say we want to establish a route between here and let's say Andros, um, Nassau, Cat Island, the Crooked Island, and then get back to Puerto Padre. And this is going to be one loop of five different ports that we will visit. Now, from here, we can decide what we want to buy and to sell. So, for example, we know that in Puerto Padre, corn is being produced and we can buy it for fairly cheap. So I could say we want to buy it right here. And then we could say we want to sell, I don't know, bricks. If we ever have any, we can sell them here. That's an option for us. But 99% of the time, the fastest way that we can set up a good trade route is to simply click here and automate it. It will automatically decide to buy whatever we know is being produced for cheap here. I actually want to change the uh, coffee right here since I know I will be producing that and we'll sell everything else. And this is basically one way of automating all trades so you really don't have to micromanage if you don't want to. Some people would say that takes away a little bit of the challenge and the fun of the game and establishing good trade routes. Others would say this makes it very, very expedient. So I think different people will appreciate that in different ways. But there we go. Just like that, we have now set up a trade route where the AI will automatically buy low and then sell wherever it thinks it can nice and high. So this is how a lot of this is going to end up working. And if you can have a lot of these convoys automated to be buying low and selling high as much as possible, you can have a pretty darn good passive income in this game. So the biggest challenge then is getting more ships so you can have more convoys. I'm going to go to Port Royal over here, which is the capital of the Dutch Vice Royalty out here. And we're going to buy some more of those ships. And now we can establish a new convoy with both of these. Or I could set up two different convoys of one ship each. Kind of depends on what I want. In my case, I'll just go ahead and have these guys travel together. I think that's going to be fine. So let's take a look at this uh, fleet right here. And we're going to set up another trade route and edit that. I'm going to start, let's say, in Port Royal, And then we are going to move up to Santiago Baracoa. Um, and then maybe head up to Puerto Padre. Can we get to Trinidad in a way that makes sense? We could. If we go back against the wind, then travel with it, we could do that. But I think that's going to be a little bit too slow. So let's leave off Trinidad for now. We'll just have these four ports, including my own capital, so we can make sure we are transferring as many goods over here as we can. And then we just do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and automate all of this because it's just the simplest way to go. We're going to confirm and we're going to assign and they are going to get started for us easy enough. More routes just means lots more money, at least until the pirates become a thing or we have a war. Then we have to be a little bit more concerned. Now let's take a little, a little look at the uh, vice royalty down here in Port Royal. Um, one reason you want to be doing a lot of trading and some tasks if you see them pop up is so you can gain a currency called fame. Fame is very important Coming. because we can use this 
to buy concessions from the Viceroyal. To start off, we're not going to be able to set up a lot of our production chains. For example, we could turn grain into beer if we had that technology unlocked, but right now we don't have the license for it. If, however, we were a bit more famous in this realm and the Viceroyal liked me, we could ask for permission to go ahead and set up this new production chain, and that opens up a lot of money-making opportunities for me. So how do you gain fame? Well, mostly from a lot of trading, from defeating pirates, and from completing quests, but also from delivering colonial colonial commodities to Port Royal. Every so often, a treasure fleet from Europe is going to be arriving and picking up goods to send back to the homeland. Right now, they want cotton, coffee, tobacco, and cacao. If we can sell a lot of these goods here in Port Royal, not only do we get money, but we'll also gain some fame as a useful merchant for the folks back home, and that's obviously quite good for me. If we can get more fame, not only can we can get concessions, we'll also be able to get captains to make our fleets more effective, and we can ask for the rights to start building in other towns and manage their production chains as well. So all these things will end up being very good for me. I did just buy a piece of a treasure map because it just popped up as an option for 10,000 gold, and treasure hunting is definitely a thing you can do in this game. We actually got a little piece of a map right here. If we can get up to the central piece, we can try to piece together where it ought to be and go treasure hunting. That's worth a lot of money and a lot of fame if you can pull that one off. Now, as I said a while ago, captains can improve the efficiency of your convoys, as well as give you some perks if you ever do get into a battle situation. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one of my fame points to get the captain's license, which allows us to even recruit captains in the first place. We are at war with France. Oh, good to know. At war with the French. Okay, that's weird because not too long ago, we were allies with them. Fun. Uh, I also did just build myself a flute, and we completed the task and got some extra fame points and so on, all of which is nice. Okay, great. Um, so, if we're fighting France, that means we do have the opportunity to go for some privateering. That said, I still do not have any military vessels at the moment, so I'm not sure that will do me a whole lot of good. Right now, what I'm trying to do is travel uh, along the coast over here, find all these Spanish cities, because I know there's quite the uh, cyclone of our uh, currents along here. If we were to do one big loop around to Port Royal, we could trade with the Spanish and get a load of goods cycled up here very, very quickly, and that'll be an unbelievably good trade route for us. But we may want to consider getting some military vessels and at least defend ourselves against the French, if not outright antagonize them. Let's take a look at our captains. So we could hire Gon Van Molen over here, who is a level 3 captain. Does have some command points available, and you do need these points in order to uh, command any military vessels. Has some skill in pirate scare, so people aren't likely to attack. But to be honest, that doesn't seem extremely useful for me, if I plan on having a military vessel anyway. This guy, on the other hand, Hans Linden, is a helmsman and can increase our speed at sea by 9%, which seems really good whether it's military or merchant vessels, and is already level 3 as well. So you're not bad. We're going to go ahead and hire you. And right now we have nothing to do with him until we get some military vessels. So can we, in fact, go ahead and buy some? Do we want to buy some? Let's take a look. Uh, we could get a Karak right over here. Could also get a Brig, but that doesn't have any cannons. So we can get one ship. One ship that would take two command points in order to own, but it does cost 250,000 gold as well as one fame point just to buy it in the first place. And this is where the military vessels become a little on the expensive side, and it's kind of a more mid to late game activity, not necessarily an early game activity. So we have our first frigate ready to go. Um, one thing we could do is go to the Viceroy and pay some money to gain a letter of mark, which would allow us to privateer the French. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that letter of mark from them. And then we are going to go to the lighthouse. We're going to go ahead and pull out our frigate, like so. And this fleet is going to need to have a captain assigned. So let's go ahead and bring you in, Mr. Helmsman, who has a daily salary and hasn't been doing anything for me up to this point. There we go. We will need sailors in order to make this work. Sailors are a requirement if you want to have functioning military ships. So... We'll go ahead and move over here, and if we look down at the very bottom, we can get all of the sailors we are going to need. There we go, no problem at all. So, we have 120 sailors ready to go, we have a captain, we have a single frigate. We can start looking for some small little uh, French merchant ships and see if we can plunder them for a little bit of cash. Ah, good, and our second frigate is now available, okay. Dodging all of the French fleets is proving to be a little bit on the fun side, but that's that's a-okay. We could actually besiege 
the uh, town of the Florida Keys. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. Can we possibly attack, let's say, a couple of merchants? They're both sitting right out here, ready for me to go. I'm gonna get you. Come here! Alright, so you're gonna give me a few other things. Okay, and I'm gonna plunder you too. There we go. This is what privateering looks like. Thank you. Look at all those goodies. Let's get the heck out of Dodge. Uh, now we're starting to really rake in the cash. This is looking pretty solid. Let's take a look at some of these trade routes. So we're making about uh, 1,400 gold per day in that route. That's not bad. Not too good here. Uh, okay, we did find at least one route that's not doing great, and I think that's because it's being raided fairly frequently. Holy crud, this one's fantastic. This is the one that goes in a big circle around the Spanish islands. Not half bad. Yeah, we are making some serious bank. Uh, if I wanted to go down here, maybe we could indeed find some more ships. Uh, a crack? Ooh, I wouldn't mind getting one of those. A really good ship with 40 cannons. Let's go ahead and purchase this sucker using one of our fame points. Because I think it is well worth it. Frigates, come back! I want you to go pick up the really big ship. The really big ship, please, and thank you. Okay, looks like we are indeed getting into a fight. They have three vessels, and I have three vessels. Um, they're a little bit stronger than I am. They have more cannons, bigger ships and uh, more sailors, so this might be a little bit risky, but we are going to attempt to manually win this fight if we can with superior tactics. Now the way this is going to work is we have several different hexes that we can move into. Each ship is going to take a turn. This one has five movement available, so we can move five hexes. But also there's maneuver, and every time you rotate 30 degrees, you have to spend some of that maneuver. Case in point, if we do this, you can see we take up two movement points and three maneuver. Do something like this, it's going to take four movement points and seven maneuver. So smaller, lighter ships have lots of maneuverability and can quickly get around in order to shoot the enemy targets. Um, I think I could possibly move right up here, right up close and personal. Now, the question is, do I want to use solid shots to do HP damage, or do I want to use canister shots to try and reduce the number of crew that they have, which might make it easier for me to do boarding parties? In this case, I'm thinking that maybe just raw damage makes the most sense. Um, so we're going to go ahead and attack this military caravel right um, along here, I guess. Now, this did use up quite a bit of my maneuver, unfortunately, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to get another attack in. Uh, unless I want to use a reload to get some extra damage, but I don't think I do. I think I just go ahead and move this way. Get a little bit further away, so if he wants to attack me with this ship, he has to go the long way around and use a lot of maneuver points. Then we have to end our turn. They're going to get to move one of their ships, and I move one of mine, etc., etc. So he's going to go this way which is a weird place for him to go. He has a range that's a little bit higher than I was expecting. Ooh, that's a pretty nice trick. Okay, but what we can do is move forward here. Now, each broadside has uh, ammunition, so it, we want to fire off both sides whenever possible. This is a good example where I could shoot here, and then if I move up this direction, we can maneuver and shoot over here as well, which is great. So we did some damage. Um, but one of my ships is taking a lot of hits. Um, we may want to go ahead and use my repair on this vessel, which is a once-in-a-battle ability to try and increase its HP by 55, so we're less likely to lose that ship. All right, we'll give that a go. All right, so we lost one ship. They lost three. So that's going to hurt me, but at the end of the day, we're going to get a lot of fame for our victory. Okay, Santiago. Now, here's a place I'd like to open up a new production chain. Since we have become well-known to the town after trading with them for a very long time and giving them things they need, we are going to request building permissions in exchange for a bit of cash. Now, these guys do produce a fair bit of grain. They are producing 22 and consuming 10. However, we can set up a brewery using up some of their crops in order to gain a, a beer which, as far as I'm aware, based on what I'm looking at, is not sold um, anywhere out here. So this could become an unbelievably lucrative business for me. Now, I wouldn't mind setting up some of my own crops in the process. That's not a bad idea, because um, we would be able to use our own uh, grain instead of buying it from anybody. So I get better profit potential. Also, I get to make sure that there is enough being produced to actually meet my needs instead of all of it getting sold. So there is something like that. Also, we should be able to get some efficiency boosts for the brewery by placing it right next to the correct farms. So what I think I want to do is maybe place down, for now, just a couple of farms over here. And then if we can place down a couple of breweries like this, 
And if we can set up some more housing, I can't. If we had some housing nearby so that people could easily get to their workplaces, that also gets us a slight efficiency boost. But for now, let's start with just this. This alone is going to take me quite a few resources to set up and a lot of money. But getting the beer and selling it everywhere is going to be amazing. Ooh, check it out. There is a famous pirate in town. Okay, so we got to hunt this guy down. If we can do that, we will get a fair bit of extra fame from the Viceroy. The trick is finding them. We might find them out in the open waters, or we might get lucky with a quest that will lead me to their hideout, which I can then clear out. Oh, there it is. Okay, there's a quest. If we pick up these guys, we can have them deliver us to the hideout, and there it is. All right, so we're going to have to fight the pirate most likely hanging out around here, but if we can then beat him... Oh, there he is. All right, we'll have to kill him now. If we can just beat him, uh, we will be able to siege the hideout just like you would a town and clear things out. So let's deal with this battle first. Now, what I'm realizing is that boarding parties are absolutely superior to doing raw damage. So the advantage of using Grape Shot is you are reducing the amount of crew on an enemy ship, which makes it easier to board and basically just tie up their ship for the rest of the battle with one of your weaker corvettes. But it also reduces the amount of damage they can do. If you completely eliminate their crew, you reduce the amount of damage they can do by like, I don't know, 50, 60, even 70%, something like that. So it gets progressively easier to win the battles if you can get the first of all these off with a really big ship, knock out the crew of their ships, and all of a sudden, it's really easy to take them down with pretty much no losses. Case in point, we won this fight with no problem whatsoever. We didn't lose any ships, we captured all of theirs. And now we get to clear out the pirate base. There it is, done! We have removed the pirates, and as a result, I am a little bit more famous than before. Hooray for me! Ooh, we're fighting against the English now. Mm, they're a little bit scarier than the French. They have better ships. The good news is I have ordered a whole mess of frigates, so I actually have a pretty large navy of my own. I think we should try to siege down Port-au-Prince over here and maybe take over the town. I'd like to do that at least once in this video if we can. Hey, something else I realized is we actually did finish up another piece of the treasure map. We have the centerpiece, which is all I technically need, and I know where this is. This isn't too far off of the uh, Cat Island or whatever it's called. Yeah, 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 we can go and do this too. But first we deal with the English. Oh, the English don't seem to like that I have been laying siege to their town. Fair enough, sir. We will meet you in the field of battle. But I also have much stronger ships, and I understand how to use Grape Shot now. Yeah, see, he's trying to do a fair bit of damage, but at the end of the day, we have as many ships as he does, and because we're maintaining our crew and he only wants to do HP damage, it looks like he can barely tickle me at this point, whereas I can just kind of have free reign to board all of his ships and continue weakening him. So this is going to go with absolutely no problem whatsoever. Once again, taking down an equivalent strength fleet with no losses on my end, and we steal some very valuable English military vessels, which only makes me more powerful. So this is awesome. The town has fallen. It's taken a while, but now we get to decide what to do with them. We could spare them. Don't see the point of that. We could plunder them and take all of their stuff, which sounds pretty nice. Or, since we do have a letter of Marquis and we are in a war, we can annex the town, which is exactly what I am going to do. And voila! We now own the town for the Dutch! I imagine this gets me a fair bit of fame, and also I have building rights right off the bat. Cool. I can open up a new cotton industry. And the war with the English has concluded, with the Dutch as the obvious victor, and I gain a new town to work with, so I'm quite happy to find out how that works. Yeah, with uh, pretty large and powerful ships, and good captains with enough command points and tactics, we absolutely can win a lot of these fights against the, uh, the French and the English take over all their ports, and this Dutch Empire will grow. Now the only thing I want to do left for this video is to go on a treasure hunt. There it is! We found the little star right here, which says we need to go on an expedition. Okay, well, I can't do that right now. We need some resources. Fine, we need pastries and rum. No problem, there are nearby ports. I can grab both of those. There we go. Now we are going to send out an expedition, and they are going to leave the vessel, and it looks like they have to travel by foot, so this is unfortunately going to take a while. They have arrived, and they are doing nothing? As far as I can tell, absolutely. Okay, well. No, oh, no, no, no. They just have to head back. Oh, so we have to wait even longer. Lovely. All right, we're about to return from our treasure hunt. What do we get? It is nothing worth note except for a statue and also some fame points well i like the fame points that's great statues um i don't know what to do with that if we take a look at the journal if we collect a bunch of statues 
we gain more fame. Apparently, and it looks like there's something really nice toward the end if you can collect all of the statues in the game. Well, that's going to be a long and tedious quest, but I could see that being pretty rewarding toward the end. I wonder if it unlocks a new city or something, like El Dorado. Ooh, there's a thought. I have no idea. That's total speculation on my part, but that would be awesome. Well, guys, I think that more or less captures everything I would want to show off for the game. We built up a trading empire and are making a very comfortable amount of money with really no threat to my trade routes at this point, only getting better as time goes on. We have been able to pirate the French and capture an English city. We went on a treasure hunt and we killed some pirates. That is what Port Royale 4 is all about. Once again, thank you to Calypso for sponsoring today's video. If you guys like what you see and you'd like to look into purchasing the game for yourself, well then take a look at the link in the description down below. My name is Provis. I appreciate you all watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.